And I want to go to Ty Cobb, the former Trump White House lawyer. So, Ty, the judge warned Trump that he could be removed from the courtroom if he's disruptive. And this was uh, after several times when Trump could be heard making comments during uh, the testimony, uh, you know, like witch hunt and, and con job. So, and Paul is talking about that. Then the judge responded, and I want to read exactly what the judge said, Ty. The judge says, Mr. Trump has the right to be present here. That right can be forfeited, and it can be forfeited if he is disruptive, which uh, what has been reported to me consists of, and if he disregards court orders, Mr. Trump, I hope I don't have to consider excluding you from the trial. So then Trump throws his hands up in response, Ty, uh, you know, kind of a, oh, and the judge says, I understand you're probably eager for me to do that. And then reporters in the courtroom heard Trump reply, Ty, quote, I would love it. Judge responds, I know you would. You just can't control yourself in this circumstance, apparently. Um, what do you make of this back and forth? I mean, does, does, he, does Trump really want the judge to kick him out? Does that serve his purpose? Yeah, very much so. I mean, Trump's only there uh, to create a political narrative. You know, there's nothing that he can contribute to this trial as opposed to the last trial where he was found guilty of sexual abuse, uh, sexual assault. Um, you know, th th there he actually could have testified and, you know, addressed the facts as to whether or not it occurred. This is just about damages. There's nothing that, you know, Trump can say about damages. There's nothing he has to say about, you know, her testimony or, or the expert's testimony. He's not going to testify. Um, so he's just there for the show and the free publicity because, you know, Trump personifies the um, adage that uh, there is no bad publicity. Uh, if, if they're talking about you, you're winning. Um, right. So I think and I think, you know, his his name calling, um, you know, is characteristic. I mean, he's went from name calling the judge to name calling Nikki Haley. Um, you know, his continued lying about the sexual assault, even though a jury has already found him guilty, is very much akin to his still lying about uh, the election being stolen. Uh, this is this is Trump at his worst, and um, I don't think we're going to see anything much different between now and November. So the, the, the foreign president then posted a very lengthy rant, rant on social media about the judge. Uh, the judge in the trial that I'm attending today is a totally biased and hostile person. He is abusive, rude, and obviously not impartial. That's the point he keeps trying to make, right? Uh, and then he went on to repeat some of these claims after court. At the time, Ty, what he was doing was slamming the judge for not canceling court tomorrow, uh, which would enable Trump to attend his mother-in-law's funeral, which is also tomorrow. Here's Trump. So he would rather have me miss the funeral or go to the funeral, miss the trial. And that's a nasty man. He's a nasty judge. He's a Trump-hating guy. And uh, it's obvious to everybody in the court. It's a disgrace, frankly, what's happening. It's a disgrace. Right, Ty, as you've made clear, he doesn't need to be there, and there's no reason for him to be there at all, right? So being there is a show, uh, and, and there is no choice. He can go to the, the funeral. There's no impact. However, he's presenting it this way for a reason. The reason is he wants the judge to look biased. Oh, you'd give other people the day off if they needed to be here, uh, but not me. D will that work? No. I mean, it'll work I, probably for his political narratives and for his diehard fans who want to believe his fantasy about uh, this being a, um, you know, politically motivated uh, uh, judiciary and Justice Department and uh, federal courts. But uh, Judge Kaplan is, you know, held in high regard. He's a well-seasoned judge. He's handled many, many cases uh, that are a much heavier lift for a judge than this particular case. Um, he's handled terrorism cases, mob cases. He just handled the... Uh, Sam Bankman Freed case. Um, you know, this is a very serious judge who believes that lawyers, you know, should understand that it's a privilege to be a lawyer and that they need to follow the rules and that their duty is, you know, to help things proceed honorably and uh, fairly and expeditiously. I think his frustration uh, with Trump is um, uh, understandable, uh, but I think he's actually probably equally, if not more, frustrated with uh, Trump's lawyers uh, who. Uh, uh, did some shocking things in courtroom in the courtroom today. Well, his lawyer Alina Haba, she would uh, violated all the rules, right? I mean, she wouldn't wouldn't stand up, and he's like, "This is a basic rule. You need to do that. These are the basic, the basic rules of decorum. Like, again and again, we're violated." That and responding to him at one point so, saying, "I don't like to be talked to that way." Plus, then she did a very you know sort of minor league job of trying to introduce some evidence, and you know the judge was very patient with her. He gave her you know sort of two recesses or two opportunities, tried to guide her through it himself, you know, called a called a halt and, you know, took a break to, uh, with the hope that one of her colleagues could help her uh, figure out how to do what it was that she intended. Uh, it was really sort of, 
you know, embarrassing. And uh, I, I think he's, you know, I think he, that's not that's not the type of lawyering that he's used to seeing. And I'm sure that frustrates him because he demands a lot of the lawyers that show up in his courtroom, not the least of which is respect, not only for the judge, but for the judicial system. And he's not getting that from her. Uh, and I'm sure that is, uh, um, you know, in part uh, what he's responding to. All right. Ty, thank you, as always. My pleasure. Thanks, Aaron. Nice right. to be with you.